that's in the Bible. They would be the color of anybody else in that area. They would have been brown. Okay, good, good. Well, we we understand that. So, so, so that that's a good thing. Brown, not not black. Well, well, here, here's the thing though: is nobody's actually black. It's, it's rather dark shades of of brown. Say for an example, I'm looking at a black. Well, nobody's nobody's brown. really white. I mean, yeah, yeah, know, exactly. These, these are the that, descriptions that we they, give. And when we're talking about African Americans, and when we're talking about black people, and when we're talking about people that live in Asia, oh, there's oh, there is definitely oh, oh, a, a okay. different skin tone there. Right, right. Now going back to what you said, nobody's white, and you're right on that. Nobody's white. I'm looking at. Um, a, a a dinner plate over there that's white. That that's I never saw anybody that has skin like that. So it's true that nobody is white. Well, I, I, I know somebody point. midnight who claims he's an albino. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, just out of curiosity, right? Because I take it that you talk to people who do believe in the Bible before, right? Oh, so, yeah, plenty. So what what um okay good. So so what exactly do you like to bring up when when you talk to them? Um, usually, I'll, uh, my favorite topic is the morality of God um, and the descriptors in the Old Testament about the morality of God. Um, that's okay, definitely have you ever what read like the entire about. Bible before? Yes, several times. Okay, good. I, I give you credit on that because most people haven't, so I'll give you credit. Most atheists have, though. If you're talking to an atheist, you can pretty much assume that we probably read the Bible. Yeah, I'd say that, that a good number probably have. Right. In fact, I'll even say this, that if I was to talk to an atheist like yourself compared to a Christian, I'd say eight out of ten times— the atheist could be more reasonable than a Christian would be. Why? Because they've actually studied the Bible, so they might have a better argument over what a Christian would say. You know, so I, I got to give them credit that they actually take the time and actually study the book compared to the people who claim to believe in it. Hell, I know a dude, man, that we've known each other for seven years, and the dude only read one book out of the Bible. I kid you not. It's like, damn, one book. Like, <laughs> oh, and of course, it was the Book of Jonah, right? One of the shortest. You so, know, so why you the, why do ahead. you why do you put so much stock in the Bible? Like, why is the Bible such an important book? Well, I mean, there, there's um, archaeology and prophecies in it that we, we see lining up to take place right now. So, you know, I, I claim to believe in, in the Bible. I have my reasons for it. But um, one of those reasons would be we see the prophecies in the Bible lining up to take place right now in, in 2022. Like what? I'll give you one. There's something called the Mark of the Beast. You, you familiar with that? Oh, yeah. I just did a stream on the, mark, or on, on the rise of the Antichrist anyway. So, so what is the Mark of the Beast? The mark of the beast is the RFID microchip. How do you, you know what that is? So if, uh, I know what a microchip is. I might not know what the specific one you're talking about is. I'm assuming it's probably something like Bezos is is going to put in your head or something. Uh, you're talking about the Nero link, right? Huh? It, the, his is called the Nero link. You're referring to that, right? No, I, 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 no, I'm not. Uh, so my okay. my understanding. So it's interesting that you bring up Nero. My understanding um, is that. Uh, the mark of the beast is 666. It's, it's a number, and it's a number that can be attributed to a man. And uh, Some original transcripts um, say that it's not 666, but 616. But the interesting thing is that with both of those numbers, 616 and 666, you can attribute those to one man, and that would be Nero, uh, a known enemy of Christians in the early church. Right, right. Some people try to say that um, and that guy was the Antichrist. I've, I've talked to people who believe that before. Now, I, our ideology of it is we don't believe that there's a one-man Antichrist in the Bible because the Bible says that, um, what is that? Is that the book of First John, the second chapter, right, verse 18 and verse 22? It, it tells us what an Antichrist is. It says that anyone that denies that Christ is the Son of God, that's a liar and an Antichrist, right? So we don't believe that there's just one man that's called the Antichrist. So that would be a part where we disagree with um, with Christians about. All right, so there can be many with, um, with Christians about. All right, so there can be many antichrists. Uh, but well, so, well, 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 everyone that don't believe is is considered to be an antichrist in the Bible. Cool. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll start calling myself the raging antichrist. It, that, <laughs> that would be probably better. Eve is, is considered to be an antichrist in the Bible. Cool. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll start calling myself the raging antichrist. It, it, that, that would be probably better. Um, well, I, I mean, how, I mean but, it, uh, well, real quick though, how how do you get that this microchip is this mark of the beast? Oh, I mean, it's very simple. If we read the prophecy, it speaks about them causing people to receive a mark in the right hand. But then this, this RFID microchip it literally gets implanted inside of people's hands, and they can buy and make transactions with it. And it fulfills the prophecy because it says that without this mark in your hand, nobody would be able to buy or sell except the one who had it. So, so we see it clearly does fulfill what was written. Well, how do you get mark on the hand, though? Most people, most people that have um, um, interpreted the Bible scholars alike, um, they assume the mark is going to be on the forehead. It says the right hand or the forehead, so so it could be either or. Mm. 
so so this mark is is a microchip, and you're not going to be able to buy or sell with this this microchip in your hand. Um, it, it, it seems it seems like flimsy that that that's really really flimsy evidence to to base truth on the Bible. I don't see how that. Now, now, I, 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 I don't I, I, until this microchip is actually the mark of the beast, right? Like, how can you say this mic- microchip is the mark of the beast? It's just a damn microchip. New technology. We have it all the time. Well, the, the reason why we'd say it is is because it literally fits the exact description that it gives us of the mark of the beast. There's people that go around saying that, that these jabs. I got to watch what I say, you know, because of YouTube but these jabs that they're putting in people, you know, they'd say that's the mark. I, I disagree with that. I'd say that it's this chip, um, you know, but of, of course. You know, there's there's many different hell. There, there's people out there, man. That they'll even tell you that the Bible itself is the mark of the beast, or the mark of the beast is is sin, or something like that. You know, so people go back and forth on, on that subject. You know, and well, I, I mean, doesn't it clearly say though that the, the mark of the beast is the number six six six? Well, well, here here's the thing with that is there's um say for an example the barcode on products well, you buy. If, if you want to be more has, accurate, to be six six one six or six six six, but either or. Okay, now. Now, the, the barcodes on the items we buy, they have 666 on. All right. So, dealing with that. All of them? Is that and all of them? No, because there's some places in the world where you can purchase Wait. something that does not have a barcode on it. But as far well, as. Well, the that's what I'm asking, though. Do, do, does all barcodes have 666 in them? All barcodes? I'm sure there's some that don't. Yeah. But as far as most of the things that you purchase in the industrialized world, it's all connected by the, the computer system. Real quick for the audience, sorry, I uh, looked up on the wrong screen there, so you had a split in the screen there for a second. Um, fascinating. I, so I, I don't know. I find that evidence to be really weak on why we should, why you should put so much oh, stock now, in the now, Bible. Now, now, oh, okay, now, now if you were listening to me, you asked me, give, give me an example of one of these things, and I was doing that, so I didn't say it. This one thing is the reason why I believe in the whole thing. I, I didn't say that. I was just responding to what you said about name one of those prophecies. That, that's right. what I responded to when you said that. So, that, I mean... I, are all of are all of these prophecies that you uh, you think are coming true? Are they are, are they like this microchip theory? I mean, I, I think at best you could say it's a theory. Uh, there's no I there's mean, no way to uh, how do you differentiate one microchip from another? Like right like how is it how is it not cell phones? Right like couldn't it be cell phones? Like almost everybody in the world has a cell phone now. Like I, I just don't get how you're getting this one particular microchip is is what it says in the Bible. Now now again. Um... Dealing with that depends on who you talk to. They're going to give you different understandings of what that means. Hell, there are some people who do believe that the mark is a cell phone. Some people do believe that. Um, but again, my take on it is this microchip, it's literally implanted into the skin of your hand. Uh, I should say under the skin of your hand. And with it, you make transactions. So I think that, that fits the, um, the prophecy better than a, a iPhone or something like that would. <laughs> um, now, this actually, it's not a theory because there are some people in the world, a few thousand people, in the world today that do have this microchip implanted underneath their skin. There was a couple years back in, 20, I want to say 2016. Well, I, I was wrong was, on the word theory. It's more like a hypothesis. But even then, like people have it um, until it's actually the microchip, right? So so until the actual Antichrist actually rises to power uh, and this well, micro, there, this microchip will be utilized in some nefarious way, if, if a couple thousand people across the world have it, that's not evidence at all that it's the mark of the beast. Oh, oh okay. Well, well let, let me finish real quick. I was going to say back in 2016, there was a company, I believe it was called Foursquare Market, where they made all of their employees receive a microchip in their hand in order to work at that establishment, right? So, yeah, you know, this has been happening for a long time. Now, the prophecy hasn't been fulfilled yet, but we're in the beginning stages of it being fulfilled, right? So I didn't say, oh, you know, because these couple thousand people have it in the world, that means it's been fulfilled. No, we're in the beginning stages of it being fulfilled, but it has not totally been completely fulfilled yet. We're just in the beginning stages of it. All right, so microchips, uh, what, what other... I mean, I, I so I don't I, I just don't understand um, why put so much stock in the Bible. Like, so if you're if your evidence of you, you know say like African Americans being um, uh, lost tribes, if Native Amer- if your evidence for Native Americans being lost tribes are all things that you're finding in the Bible, um, and you're going against you know everything science and academia would tell you about the lost tribes of Israel. Um, I want to understand why you put so much stock in that Bible, uh, this 2000 year old book that can't even really seem to describe these events with any accuracy at all. Like you would think that, you know, if this is divinely inspired by the all powerful God, maybe not describe it in a way that the people of the time wouldn't understand it, but also make sure that he's describing it in a way that the people of the future, when it's going to happen, could understand it. Why would you put so much stock in this Bible? So what are some of the other um, prophecies that are coming true? Well, I, I mean, say for an example, the United States is mentioned in the Bible as well. And it's, Bible speaks about the overthrow of the United States and World War Three. How? In the, in the Bible. How? 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 I mean, just read Revelation the seventeenth and eighteenth chapter. You read that before, right? Say what? Say that again. I'm sorry. 
I said, I mean, there's plenty of places where it speaks about America, but one of the easiest ones would be Revelation 17 and the 18th chapter. Are you, you're familiar with those ones, right? Uh, I've read Revelations, but it's been a while. So Revelation, Revelation 17, do you know which verse? I mean, you can't just read one verse out of it in order to understand it. But, uh, All right. So one of the seven angels to... who had the seven bulls came and said to me, come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried... to the just jump to the next one because uh, the seventeenth one it's too much to break down. Then. All right, so to eighteen, oh, and I'm doing it again. I'm sorry, sorry, chat. I always do that. I, I I go to the screen I'm used to having, but that's the screen I have Streamyard on. Um, so eighteen. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority, and the earth will was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, "Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling for demons, a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries." Then I heard another voice from heaven say, uh, come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues, for her, her sins are piled up in heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Pour her a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned as queen. I am not a widow. I will never mourn. Therefore, in one day her plagues will overtake her, death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. <sighs> this is a long long chapter you don't you don't have to get the rest but I, i'm i have to ask so, how, how, how does any of that talk about america it's talking about babylon now, now what is babylon babylon was an empire well what does the word babylon huh what what does the word babylon mean yes babylon definition um babylon was a contemptuous or dismissive term for aspects of a society seen as degenerate or oppressive especially the police Huh? Okay. What? Well, well, I've well, never, I've never heard that before. That's weird. Chiefly among oh, Rastafarians. Oh, okay. Now, now there was an empire, of course, in the past that fell that was named Babylon. But then in the future, there's a, another Babylon. It calls this one Mystery Babylon or the Great City. Other places called the, the Dolder Babylon, and then some places it just calls it Babylon. But I mean, so even even the Bible, like the verses that I was reading from, like the the subtitles of the of of, of the inside that chapter, it was the downfall of Babylon, and Babylon was an empire of those times, right? Now, now, now again, it calls this new empire Babylon as well. It calls both of them Babylon because Babylon, the word just means confusion. That that's what the word Babylon means. So this this would be a new empire that's referred to as as Babylon. Hmm. So we believe this is talking about the United States here. Well, so you believe it's talking about the United States. It doesn't actually talk about the United States. You believe it talks about well, the United States. I, I, well, well I, let me rephrase myself. We know it's talking about America because we've studied it. Now, of course, it's not going to mention that exact word here because this isn't meant for most people to know about. In fact, that's why it tells you that it's a mystery. A mystery is something that's not supposed to be easily solvable, right? So this was uh, a mystery that was put here. So the one that does research into it can solve it. So, I, so why America though? Why couldn't it be any of the other great nations of the modern world? Why America? Well, well, for one, well, for one, because the Israelites are enslaved over here in America and America was built off of the rape, robbery and murder of the Israelites. So, so, I mean, there's so many points for why it would be this place that it's, but yeah, they would still be in Africa time. though as well. Right. Now, Africa, even though they're wicked over there as well, they wouldn't be considered to be Babylon. Why not? Why not? Because they don't fit all the qualifications. So, I mean, couldn't it just be that you live in America, so you want to make it America? No. Why not? I, I'd say there's probably uh, just as many other places in the world that could be uh, full, okay. as full of sin or, or whatever you want to put on America. No. Uh, okay, now, now that wasn't what I went here for, because if you read it, it speaks about the merchants of the Europe becoming rich off of sending their merchandise to this place, right? The way that nations are made rich is they manufacture merchandise for cheap, then they import it by ship over here to the states and then it's sold to the population over here making those countries rich so they manufacture it cheap sell it over here and make a great profit on it right so if you read this it's speaking about a place that's making all the merchants of the europe rich and if we do the research on the countries in the world that are you know making all these countries rich by importing their merchandise and selling it for them clearly america is at the top of that list so all of these factors being piled together we would have to conclude that it's talking about the united states is not really another um one that comes close to it once we pile on all of the um, things that speaks about this place as, as being or doing. All right. Um, yeah. Sorry. So let's move on. I, I have some more questions about, you know, just kind of general BHI beliefs, and I, I'm trying to gauge where you kind of fall on them. Um, did did the Holocaust happen? Did it happen? Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure that did happen, but we wouldn't say that those are the, the real. All right. But I mean. 
did it happen? Yes. All right. So, so you, you kind of uh, fall away there. Um, are Jews devils? Are, are are the Jews that are in Israel, or or the Jews that that you don't consider to be um, of the lost tribes of Israel, um, are they devils that are posing as human beings? Devils posing as human beings. Well, what do you mean by that? What's well, common uh, Black Hebrew Israelite belief that, well, well, that modern Jews, to... modern Jews are not human beings, but devils posing as human beings. I have never heard somebody say that before. Wait, you're familiar with the ISUPK, right? Wait, wait, wait hold, hold on a second. Uh, when you say that, are you referring to them calling people devils, or are you no? They, to... I'm referring to them saying they're they're not human beings; that they're devils pretending to be human beings. I've I've never heard anybody say that before. You told me you was familiar with the ISUPK before. I I know I know about the ISUPK, yes, but I, I, after the years of watching them, I've never heard them say it. They're actual demons. It didn't take me very long. It, it didn't take me very long at all. It's oh, one of the first oh, things oh, I pointed wait, out about wait, them. Wait, just clear, hold, hold on a second, buddy. I had to clear aside <laughs> for me. If I call somebody a demon, am I saying that that person is actually a a demon in a human form? No, I'm just calling that person. Well, no, that's what they're literally doing, doing. So, are white oh, okay, are so white people doing? are white people the personification of evil? Well, white people would be the Edomites in the Bible. So, is that the personification of evil? Um, it, it would depend on, on the context because all nations can do evil. But I have to go back to something you said there because it, it sparked my curiosity. So from when I was watching them, they'll call somebody a, a devil or a demon, but they're not saying that that person's a demon in human form. They're just calling that person that because of something you know they're saying or, or what they're doing. So they don't mean that that person's actually a demon in human form. Like, like, like literally, th that's not what they mean when they say that. So then why have 144 different groups within the Black Hebrew Israelite umbrella been been labeled as a hate group, um, anti-Semitic, um, and um, basically a, a group to watch out for for possible violence. Why? Because that's the, a label that they decided to, to put on us. Let me real quick. So are, are you are you claiming that the Black Hebrew Israelites um, are not anti-Semitic? That they they don't consider modern Jewish people to be devils, and that they don't consider white what people to be the personification of evil itself? Uh, yes, because, we do hold to that belief. That's what I thought. Thank you for being honest. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now, to clarify what you said, you brought up to say that they're saying that these people are actually demons in human form. Is that what you meant, or did you no, mean that's, it just call that's, them that's the belief. I mean, uh, so don't even take uh, my yeah, word for I, it. I, Research I your own that. movement. Research your own movement, because no, 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 basic brother, research hold, will bring you there. No, no, hold, hold on a second. I, I think what you're doing, let, let me bring you up an example. Christ called Peter Satan. Does that actually mean that that was the spiritual demon Satan disguised as Peter? All right. Uh, I would say let's just pull up one of the ISUPK's videos, but I don't want to get uh, no, I, I don't oh, want to get okay, this video no, no. taken down. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, you have to understand something real quick. What they're saying is that, say for an example, somebody comes up and they're acting like a demon. They'll call them, you know, get out of here, demon. They're obviously, they don't mean that that person's actually a, a demon in human form. That's obviously not what they mean. With but, that, uh, well, I mean, again, I would I would say just do basic research on the on, on the movement that you claim to be involved in. That's all I would say. Just do uh, basic research. How about how about you send me a video where they said that and I'll give it a watch. How about you? How, how about you get on your computer and you do some reading? Stop watching these fucking videos. I mean, <laughs> you, don't have to be mean. you don't have to be mean to me, man. I I'm not being mean. That. I'm just trying to tell you as really as I can. Like, stop watching the videos and actually research this movement that you're latching yourself to because this movement is racist. It's full of hate and it is anti-Semitic as fuck. I, I'm totally shocked that you acknowledge that there was a Holocaust because most of your of the people in your movement do not. I'm totally shocked okay, that you're yeah, not no, willing I, to sit I, here I, and I, say oh, that oh. Jews are actual demons posing as human beings because most of the people in your subgroup of the black Hebrew Israelites will not sit there and lie about that. Okay, now, now again, off of my years of watching these groups, I have never heard a group say that demons can transform into a human form. I've never heard that. Now, if you can send me a video on it, I will watch it. And I'll listen, but off of what I've heard so far, I have never heard anybody say that. That's all I said. All right. Well, I, I would definitely take you at your word that you don't believe that. Um, but again, like I said, just basic research into the movement, dude. Um, just do some basic research. Oh, oh, okay. It, now, now, okay. Now, now, I'm asking you, since since you did the research, can you send me one or two ways when they said that? That's all. I'm well, oh yeah, I, I can definitely do that. I, I would have to spend some time. Um, oh, okay. That, I, I would have fine. to spend some time and find the videos. Like I said, you said that the ISUPK and other groups like that, um, which. You know, those are the vocal groups on here on YouTube. Now, not every single black Hebrew Israelite is an anti-Semitic or a racist. I do want to make that very clear. I'm talking about these subgroups, these very extreme subgroups that you have class. You have put yourself into that umbrella with with the beliefs what that does, you have given uh, me here today. Well, what what does racism mean in, in the context that they're saying? Racism is is hatred against a person based upon their skin color. 
If you want to, I, uh, I really enjoy like exact definitions. So we'll, we'll give we'll give a exact definition. Well, would it be a racist thing? Let's just give a hypothetical. Would it be racist if, let's say, I had two people in line? One was a um, an African, and the other was a Chinese man. What if I was to put the um, the African before the Chinese man just because he's African and the other guy's Chinese? Would that be a racist thing to do? I mean, so say that again. You have an African and a Chinese man, and then you put the African before the Chinese man just because he's African. Like, what do you mean put yeah, him before? Be Let's say just for a hypothetical, right? If I was a server at a restaurant and I decided to serve the African before the um, – the other guy I said, um, would that be a racist thing because I chose to serve this person before the other one just because of what his nationality is? Would that be considered to be racist? If you were to serve this other one just based upon nationality, yeah, I would say that's probably racist. Okay, so, so it would be a racist thing. I, the the exact definition is prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against a person or people on the basis of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group. So, yeah, that would definitely fall within racism. So, okay, good. So, so it would be racist for me to put one person above another just because they're of a, a group that I favor, right? Yes. Okay, good. This is Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. It says, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face, the face of the earth. Well, what do you think about that, please? Well, I think that the Bible is stupid, and I don't, I, I don't just, understand, I, I, I don't understand why you would justify racism based upon a two thousand year old book, oh, or why oh, you would oh, want okay. to be a part of a group that's actively involved in racism. Let me ask you another question: Do you think, wait, wait, do you brother, think that the lost on. tribe of Israel should have its own state within America, or should America only belong to the lost tribe of Israel? Well, the 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 Native Americans were dwelling here first. Yes, I would agree with you. Native Americans have claim to land. I am I am Native American. I agree with you. But Black Hebrew Israel, especially the subset of Black Hebrew Hebrew Israelites that you are latching yourself to, they believe that there should be an ethno state just for Latinos, Black Americans, and Native Americans. Do you believe that? Well, based on the ones that I've um, listened to throughout the years, we're, we're really not looking to build ourselves up a community here. We're waiting until Christ returns and redeems us. Now, there are some groups out there who are trying to, you know, get their own land together where they can, you know, have their own groups and set up. Some of them, you know, do go by that. But we'd say, you know, going by, you know, Great Millstone and, you know, some of the other groups like Sakari that I would, um, you know, listen to throughout the years. You know, we are of the belief that, um, you know, we're not trying to build ourselves up something here on this side, but rather we're waiting until Christ returns and sets up the kingdom on earth. That that's mainly what we're looking for. So some groups do believe that, but, but we we're not looking for that. Should you do violence upon the Edomites? I believe they're called. Um, not today, because you know if you do that, you'll get punished. But in the Bible, in the future, there will be a punishment upon the Edomites. So you're saying that you shouldn't enact that punishment. Who enacts the punishment? Well, well, when Christ returns, he's going to have for his the name. audience. If you if you're not following, the Edomites are white people. R repeat that for me. Your question. Um, who who's going to dole out the punishment to white folks? Who's going to dole out the punishment? Yeah. Well, Christ is going to give the decree, and then his servants are going to go and fulfill his will. I'll give you an example. What is that? Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, the 20th verse. It says, for you are my battle axe and my weapons of war. With thee will I tear down kingdoms and bring the people down. They were paraphrasing it. So Christ is going to use his men to do it, but that day has not came yet. That's something in the future. So that day, but, but in the future, uh, black Hebrew Israelites will have to punish the Edomites. Yes, in the future, they will under Christ's just, decree. Just not right now. So when Jesus Christ comes back, the lost tribes of Israel are going to commit a genocide upon white people. According to the Bible, the Israelites are going to make the Edomites servants under them for a period of time. But then after that, the Edomites will have to be done away with. And there's verses we can pull on that. So not just a genocide. We're talking xenocide here, right? Like all white people will need to be exterminated. According to the Bible, all, all Edomites will, will be done away with, according to Ob Obadiah chapter 1, verse 18. So I, I just want to ask, like... Why latch yourself to a group that believes these things? You know, okay. I, I don't like smoking on stream, but I really want you to see my face here. Like, why latch okay, yourself to a group that believes these things? Oh, okay, let, let me respond to that. Now, you, you don't know my background. I used to be a, uh, you know, a Catholic and a Seventh-day Adventist for all my life, right? But then, as I was watching some of these videos, I stumbled upon some of the, the uh, Hebrew Israelite videos. And the way they break down the Bible, I, I never seen this. These guys are hitting like 200 precepts in like two hours, you know, compared to Christianity only going over, you know, one or two scriptures throughout an entire two hours or whatever, and then breaking them down wrong. So after I saw what these guys are doing and listened to what they're teaching, I was like, hey, these guys, these guys are bringing it out. And after I read the Bible for myself, but I actually went back and read the Bible, and then I concluded that what I was taught in church was incorrect. Let me give you a couple of examples. Church teaches me that God loves everybody. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches that God hates certain people.
the Bible teaches that Satan is a servant under God, but Christianity teaches that Satan is in rebellion against God. You know, so some examples like that shows that what we were told in church is incorrect, but the Bible is true. So, so you don't, so let me, I'm trying to understand. So you don't think that Satan is in rebellion of God? Wait, repeat, repeat that for me, please. Do you think that Satan is in rebellion of God? Did you say Satan or Satan is? Satan. Satan, according to the Bible, we can pull up some precepts. According to the Bible, Satan is under God's authority. Like, let me give you one example. In Job chapter 2. Oh, I, I'm Satan familiar. Says, I say, the, I say, oh, okay, I say the same things. I, I wasn't aware that black Hebrew Israelites believe this. I don't know everything about black Hebrew Israelite beliefs, believe it or not. I have studied quite a bit. Like I said, this is, okay. one, of, this is one of the first subsets of, of quote-unquote Christianity um, that I would actually consider a cult that I've ever dealt with. Okay, now, now yeah, as far as our understanding of Satan, we believe that Satan's under God's authority. You know, God can give him or demons, you know, permission to go do certain things. And we see another uh, instance of that in the book of First Kings, the 22nd chapter, the 18th verse, right? The Most High gave Satan, or excuse me, not Satan, a, a demon, um, you know, permission to go and, you know, tell a lie to a certain king, right? So God has dominion over these spirits and Satan. They're under his will, right? But that's something that Christianity gets wrong. So we both believe in the same book, but we had different ideologies within it, right? So well, but don't, don't you agree, though, that there's also interpretations that could, you know, because I'm with you. I'll, I'll bring that up with Christians all the time. Right. Like I bring up Job and how how um, uh, God seems to give Satan permission. Uh, it, like it, I think it's fairly clear. But wouldn't you agree that there's also other interpretations that that would lead you to conclude that Satan would be in a rebellion of God? I mean, that's that's one of our biggest criticisms as, as atheists is that the Bible is so fundamentally um, contradictory of itself. So well, while, while, while you can clearly, I agree, interpret that Satan is not in rebellion, but under the authority of God. You can also clearly interpret that Satan is, is indeed in rebellion of God. Okay, now what here? I'm going to respond to that real quick. One example that people like to bring up would be the book of, um, what is it, Isaiah, the 14th chapter, when it speaks about Lucifer, how has thou fallen from heaven, right? They all like to go there to bring that up. But the thing about that, though, is if you go to verse 4, it tells you it's talking about the king of Babylon. So it was talking about Nebuchadnezzar in the, the, uh, in the chapter there. So reading the entire thing in context, it wasn't talking about a spiritual demon, Satan. But that's the scripture that most Christians would go to when we ask them, you know, will show us where Satan was cast down from heaven. They'll go right here. But when we read the context of it, we see it's not talking about that. Now, what, what about the temptation you know, of Jesus? Um, you, you know, I, I, there's plenty there's plenty of context, I think, where you can, especially when it comes to Jesus. If uh, You know, um, I, I know black Hebrew Israelites will have a slightly different uh outlook on Jesus than maybe your conventional Christian would, but wouldn't the temptation of Jesus by Satan be considered rebellion of God? No, because the Most High sent him to uh, to tempt Christ. So Satan can, Satan can tempt, but we're not disagreeing with that, that Satan is a, a tempter, but he's not in rebellion against God. God can use Satan to go and tempt people, such as the example I gave in um, 1 Kings, the 22nd chapter, when a demon went and told a lie to a king, right? So well, God can use these spirits to, to do these things. Uh, I apologize. I allowed us to kind of get into the weeds because uh, I, I do get fascinated with biblical discussions and I do get fascinated just, with Just out systems. of curiosity, if you don't mind, just out of curiosity, you made a statement a second ago about something along the lines I'm nearly paraphrasing, but you said, you know, Christians and, you know, Hebrew Israelites, you might have a different, you know, perspective on Christ. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, I mean, I, I think you definitely have a different perspective on Christ. So do you think that you and Christians share the same perspective? But okay, but but tell me one of some of their perspectives just so I know how to properly respond because I mean there could be five hundred different things so like name one or two perspectives if you can. Well, I don't see. I I don't even really know. Um, I, all right, so your belief of Jesus is one of the few things that I really care less about uh, with the Black Hebrew Israelites. So maybe it's the same, but I don't know. Like Son of God, um, you know, maybe God Himself, part of the Holy Trinity, um, those types of things. Yeah, we, we believe that um that Christ was the Son of God, but we don't believe that he's God himself, right? We don't believe that there's a trinity. We, we believe that Christ was, was the Messiah that was probably yeah, so, to come. Yeah, so you would have a different and, belief than most mainstream but, Christians, right? Right, because the Christians, they believe in Christ. We do believe in Christ, too, but then they'll believe that Christ is the Most High God. We don't hold that view. We believe that Christ Not all is Christians, a, but I'll grant you, like, most Christians. Yeah, yeah. Now, we'll say this. Christ is a God, but he's not the Most High God. So that, that's a different subject there. Christ is a God, but he's not the Most High God. What about Muhammad? So that, Muhammad, but yeah. we we don't uh, we don't subscribe to those those teachings of, of the Quran or none of that. None at all. I thought I thought some of your uh, some of the branches that you kind of affiliate with that goes in the direction of Native Americans and uh, and Latinos being part yeah, of it. Based on based on the five or six Israelite camps as they call them, I've never seen any of them use the Quran for anything other than to debate Muslims about you know how they're wrong about their views. But I've never seen Hebrew Israelites 
who believe in the Quran. Maybe there's one or two out there, sure, so, but I've never seen it. I'm still not really clear on, on why you chose black Hebrew Israelites, just because you, you think some, some branches of Christianity got it wrong, or, or why you... Well, well why, I'll answer it. The reason why is because everything they teach, they can go into the Bible and provide precepts to support it. Like, let me give you one example. Let me give you well, no, but, so, well, let, let me give you, like, clarify what I'm talking about, though. So, so you can believe in their belief systems without joining their fundamental uh, fundamentalist extreme groups and, and having some of these really, really extreme beliefs. Um, so, so like, like, my question is, all right, so you think that cr mainstream Christianity gets it wrong, um, and you jump into this black Hebrew Israelite ideology, why, and you kind of try to downplay earlier that you, you didn't understand um, the groups that I was talking about in your specific subset of black Hebrew Israelite, um, but then you, you acknowledge that you did understand. So you, you understand that these no, groups are I, out I there, don't, I don't literally, think, I, don't I mean, they're, they're calling for violence now, not, not in the future, but now against Edenites and against Jews. Okay, can you show me a video clip where, where they said that they're going to go out? I can send you video clips. I am not going to pull up video clips of the ISUPK oh, oh, on my channel. Oh, I'm just oh, not going to do oh, it. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Now, with that being said, there might be a group or two out there who might try to do that now, but that's not what I'm sitting here saying to do, right? Well, I mean, now, you can, you can say that about the KKK, right? Oh, like, you can say that there's some oh, groups of the KKK oh, that still oh, want to oh, go out there and, and burn oh, crosses okay, and hang now, black man. people, oh, but, oh, and there's some groups that don't, but why why the, but why still latch yourself to the KKK? I don't understand. Take it. Take a chill film a second, man. Hold on. Now, going back. Okay, now. But, and there's some groups that don't. But why? Why? The, why still latch yourself to the KKK? I don't right, understand. Uh, take it. Take a chill film a second, man. Hold on. All right, go ahead. Now going back. Okay. Now going back to what you were saying. What? Why do I choose to have these beliefs? Is because everything they're saying, they can go into the Bible and back it up. Let me give you a example. When I first stumbled across them, I used to believe in hell, right? That you know, if you're bad, you can go to a certain place and burn forever, like I learned in Christianity. But then when I heard. The Hebrew Israelites, you know, they mentioned, oh, you know, there's no such place as hell. And I was thinking to myself, wait a second, what the hell? You know, they're saying that there's no place as hell. But then I, you know, took a couple hours, you know, and looked at what they're saying, you know, and it actually made a lot of sense that hell in the Bible is just a condition of suffering that takes place on the earth. And I looked at the precepts they have to back up such a claim. And I had to think, you know, to myself for, you know, a number of weeks or whatever, you know, hell, maybe, you know, my viewpoint, you know, of this topic could be incorrect, you know. So then after researching the subject, you know, a few times, I came to the conclusion that I had a false ideology on the subject, so I changed my viewpoint on it. And why was that? Because I listened to the BHI and what they were saying, and then I took the information they gave me from their street teaching videos, and I went and did my own research with that, and it led me to the conclusion that I was incorrect with what I believe. Just to give one example. Go ahead. Well, no, I, I, here, let me... Uh, You're muted, by the way. Yeah, I, I had to unmute that button. Um, yeah, and, and generally, I tend to accept with uh, the concept that Bree is putting out in the side chat that we don't choose our beliefs. But you are literally sitting here telling me that you did, right? Like that 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 you, you know you grew up um, Seventh Day Adventist, which I know a few Seventh Day Adventists. I live in Michigan; they're all around me. I know Justin Coe. One of these days, he's actually going to uh, introduce me to all of Michigan's Seventh Day Adventist leaders, and I'm going to have a conversation with him. I can't wait. Um, he's a very busy person, though, and he lives all the way across the country, so it has to be when he's here visiting these people in Michigan. But you, you know, uh, usually I would agree. Like we just don't choose our beliefs, but at some point in our in our adulthood, I think that we do, right? Like, so, you know, I I chose no longer to be a racist, no longer to be a homophobe. I made those choices, right? Like, um, and, and you're telling me right. you're you're telling me that you you know you you thought the Christians had it wrong. You started studying, you, you started hearing some of the street preachers, which is something that ISUPK and a lot of these groups will do quite a bit. Um, you started watching videos, well, right? So so you decided to to become a part of a group that you're finding out about. If you did research into the things they're saying, why not do research into um, the level of violence that's surrounding these isolated groups? Okay, now, now as response to, to what you said, now it's not like, say for an example, because the Bible teaches against something called homosexuality, right? It says that that's a sin unto death. So if I go and tell somebody that, it's not that I came to that conclusion that homosexuality is wrong, but rather I was reading the Bible and I accepted that the Bible teaches that that's wrong. So the same thing if I was to say, that God makes evil, not Satan. It's not that I want to believe that God makes that. It's rather I read the Bible and it says that God was the one behind it, not Satan, right? So with these things, it's not that we want to go around teaching that, you know, say for an example, the Bible teaches when Christ returns, he's going to kill a lot of people. That's what the Bible says. So it's not that I want to believe that, but rather that's what the Bible says. Well, so therefore I have to accept it because I claim to believe in the Bible. <laughs> well, no, you don't have to accept it. And that gets back into my, so, why, why I was trying to question so, you about so, why you put so much stock into the Bible. I don't think uh, it's very okay. fair. Like, I, I don't think it's very fair for you to say that, you know, I personally don't believe homosexuality is a sin, but because the Bible says so, I have to believe it. Now, that, now, that's that's I, like I a cop out. That's like that's putting it on the Bible and not taking responsibility for yourself. But Rage and Atheist, I never said that I was okay with homosexuality. Well, when did I say that? Well, I mean, you kind of, well, you, no, you no, use no, that no, analogy, no, right? So, 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 so you're not okay with homosexuality. What's wrong with it? Oh, okay. Now, hold on a second. 
because now, now you're you're trying to cut me off so the audience can't hear what I'm saying. What I said is it's not about what I'm okay with and what I'm not okay with. But if I claim to believe in the Bible, I have to believe in whatever that says. So it's not up to my perusal. It's if I claim to believe in the book and to teach the book, I got to believe and teach him exactly what it says. Because if I if I don't do that, let's say for an example, right? Because there's some you know pastors out here who will tell people, oh, you just got to believe in Christ, you know, and then you can go be a homosexual and you're all good. Hey, I can't do that because I'll be in danger of the judgment because it tells us in Revelation the 22nd chapter, verse 18 and verse 19, that anyone that takes away or adds to this book will get the plagues add on to him and he'll get his name taken out of the book of life, right? So if we add or take away from it, you know, we're, we're going to bring destruction on ourselves, you know, so we have to believe in the Bible, what it says and, and teach it regardless of how we feel about it. All right. So, so you, you, you feel it's your responsibility to what when it comes to gay people? Well, according to the Bible, you're supposed to stone that person, but of course, you know, you can't go out and do that today. So that person who's living that lifestyle will tell them, Hey, you know, you, you better repent from that. And if you don't, Hey, well, that, that's going to be your ass then on judgment. So because in the modern world, you can't stone them to death. You, you just say, Hey, you, you suck. You're wrong. You, uh, you know, if you don't stop being who you are, then you're going to burn in hell forever, essentially. Right. Well, and that, and that shows that, that you weren't paying attention. Cause I said, we don't believe that there's such a thing as hell. Oh yeah. I, 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 I forgot. I, I forgot that. Yeah. Black people and Israelites don't really believe in hell. Um, but, now, I mean, now, but, but you get my just, you're, so, so what do you believe yeah, happens on the judgment day? What's the punishment? I, repeat that for me. What do you believe happens on judgment? What's the punishment? Well, on Judgment Day, there is a, something called a lake of fire judgment, but that lake of fire is not hell because it says in, um, what is that, Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, it says a death in hell. So you're, an, you're an annihilationist? I, I didn't say that. There's something called reincarnation in the Bible as well. Uh, there's, so, there's, there's a me, vague me, reference me, to uh, um, going back to the temple. or, or Okay, let, let so, me give you a breakdown real quick because you asked me what's going to happen. Here, here's our view on it. We believe on this side, you know, that if you're not saved when Christ returns, right, if you don't receive salvation when Christ returns, you'll be destroyed in the lake of fire. But then in the future, you'll be born again into a brand new body and you'll be living here on the earth. So the Israelites are going to be in a righteous state of form, but the other nations are going to be in servitude to the nation of Israel for a period of time. That's our viewpoint. on. It. All right. So but, but if, if you were still allowed to stone them, would, would you? If we were still allowed to do that, well, well, let, let me let me say this: If somebody was to kill a homosexual, it would be okay according to God's laws because God never. Wait, wait a minute. So you're saying it's okay to kill a homosexual? According to the Bible, yes, but that doesn't mean because let me give you an example: If somebody did that, God doesn't have a problem with it because He commanded that's what's supposed to be done. However, given the circumstances that we live in today, that might not be a wise thing to do. That's why the Bible says in the book of First Corinthians, chapter six. Verse 12, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. So is it lawful to do that? According to God's law, that's what's supposed to happen. But if you do that, you're going to get punished because we live in an un ungodly society. Like, let me give you another example. The Bible teaches that, let's say if a man... So, so, home so it's ungodly, right? Finish, if somebody gets arrested for murder or for torturing and abusing a gay person, it's because the society is ungodly that they were arrested for it. Wait, let, 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 me, let me finish real quick because you cut me off. But that's what you just said, though. You have to hear. You have to hear what I'm saying before you can try to. to All right, I, I agree. I, I'm sorry for uh, cutting okay. you off. That's I do want to say. I do want to say to Jason in the side chat. Don't worry. Um, I am going to ask him. You know how he knows he's a black Hebrew Israelite. I'm, I'm kind of saving that for the end. Um, but I, I will try to make sure I remember to ask that question because a lot of people want to know. Like, know that. But go ahead and okay. continue. Okay. Now, now I was going to say that. Say for an example, if a man comes home from a long days of work and he finds his wife in bed with another man. According to the Bible, that woman and the man she's with are supposed to be stoned to death. So if a man was to do that, if he came home and found his wife in bed with another man, if he was to kill them both according to God's law, that's what that's justice. However, given the circumstances in the society we live in today, if he was to do that, he'd be on death row. Right. So that's not a wise well, thing but, to do today. Well, would it be worth it though if it's pleasant in the eyes of God? Well, the way we respond to that is right now we're not in the time to be enacting the judgment on these, these sinners ourselves. Like, say, for an example, if somebody goes to a pride parade, all they can really do is say, hey, you know, you guys better, you know, change your lifestyle, you know, come out of that, you know, otherwise you're going to, you know, be destroyed on judgment day. That, that's the best we should be doing right now because if you, you know, go over that and, you know, kill that person, you're going to probably be put to death by the government for, as they call murder, right? So there's certain yeah. things in God's law that you cannot perfectly keep 100% today. Let well, me give thankfully, you let me, thankfully. Let, let, me give you, let me give you another one. The Bible teaches that a man can have more than one wife. Even though it's lawful to do that, that might not be an expedient thing to go out and do today. Hell, most of our people can't even afford to feed, you know, one wife and kids. You know, so let, so, alone so let me get this right. Let, let, well, real quick, I don't mean to cut you off, but let me get this right. 
Wife sleeps with another man. Death. Man, as many, he can have more than one wife. He can sleep with other women. No death, right? As long as, as, long as that woman's not married to another man. Otherwise, can the, can the woman be married to another man? No, no, a woman right? Can, no, <laughs> a, a woman can only be with one man. A woman and, and a man can be with many. All right, so uh, like, so yeah. uh, what you're giving me, and 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 people like myself, people like scholar fiction, we love to have these conversations and, and about mind, the morality it's not, of it's God. Not it's not what I'm giving you. It's rather what. The it's, Bible your, it's your fucked up Bible. I, I totally agree. Um, but but you believe this shit. Um, so yes. So so we often like to have these 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 arguments about the morality of God, and, and we we will often use examples like you know God commanding Israelites to put swords through the brains of babies and stuff, but you're giving us equally um, viable answers in our arguments against the morality of God because you're you're literally saying that the societies that stop these monstrosities from happening, the, the needless death of people just because they're gay, the needless death of, of women who make a mistake, cheat on their husbands, people make human mistakes all the time, I'm not condoning it, but people make mistakes, but just fucking kill them, right? And, and you're, you're claiming that the societies that stop these brutalities are ungodly, so you're, you're literally accepting the very evil morality of your God and basing them as the prop for your beliefs okay, can you can you repeat that i was washing my hands so i had more well, time to hear you I'm, I'm asking how can you follow a god that's so morally reprehensible i'll respond to that but how, you as a man how, how who gave you the morality to decide what's or i should say the right to describe what's I, moral and not moral. don't take it there like everybody tries to take it there too no, no, how, no, how can I, an I'm atheist just asking, have morality i'm just really i, I developed my morality I, I developed i developed my morality just like you did through a trial of uh, a process of trial and error through through learning throughout my life through through the things that i observe around me right um i have to trust my own brain i have to trust my own instincts and my instincts tell tell me that everything you're saying about um, the righteousness of this god and what he would have you do but you cannot do because you live in an ungodly society is morally reprehensible and evil Okay, now, now what part about the Bible is in question on this particular? Well, I, I, well everything we're talking about right now, the, you know, the fact that if you kill a gay person, um, while you might face ramifications in this life, you will be rewarded in the next. If, 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 if you kill your cheating wife, even though you have five wives yourself, then you will be rewarded in the next. This, 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 this is monstrous. Well, well, well actually, on, on that... It's rather, say for an example, if somebody was to do that, it's not necessarily to uplift themselves, but rather to punish that person for breaking God's law. That, that's what it's more so doing, is rewarding that person with a punishment for breaking God's law. That, that's really what that is. What, like going, going to prison is, is like a punishment for, for, for carrying out God's law? No, what I said, because you, you were trying to make an argument that, oh, you know, if you go out and, and murder someone who committed adultery, you see, you're going to be rewarded in the next life, even though you might be punished in this life. And then I responded and said, when when doing that, right, when you kill somebody who broke God's law, a commandment they broke, and it's worthy of death for them, what happens when you take that judgment out on them? Again, we're not saying to do that because obviously, you know, there's punishment. Yes, yeah, please but, do um, not do that. But uh, with that, it's rather to reward that person with a judgment for them breaking God's commandment. That's really what that is. So it's not about us receiving a reward for doing that, but rather rewarding that person with a judgment for breaking God's commandments. Can, Go ahead. Can, can you not, uh, so do you just not see how morally bankrupt that is? Like, like, so if you base your morality upon this, this awful system of atrocity. Oh, I, I just noticed, I just noticed you have a NASA shirt on. <laughs> everybody says that. Morality upon this this awful system of atrocity. Oh, I, I just noticed. I just noticed you have a NASA shirt on. <laughs> Everybody says that. What, what's wrong with the NASA shirt? Are you? Oh, you're, so, you're so a flat you, earther. You, you I believe, forgot. Yeah, you, you believe in. Do you believe everything NASA puts up, or or, or, or what, what? What's your view on that? Do you believe everything they say? I, 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 I believe my lion eyes. My my. We've had telescopes our whole lives. I don't. I don't right now, but I grew up with telescopes. Okay, is anything about NASA fishy, or do you believe all of it that they say? Well, that, there's yeah. definitely some fishy. There's there's fishy shit with any government agency. So I mean, sure, but but d does that mean that I disbelieve um, what what is fact? No. Uh, what what's fact? Just out of curiosity. We've seen the Earth from space. That's fact. But how how do you know that though? Because we send space shuttles up all the time, and not just NASA. Every uh, every major country in the world. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Okay, now, now do you find it fishy why the NASA space launches are always located next to the ocean? Uh, say that again? Don't you find it a little weird on how all of the uh, the space, you know, uh, NASA launches are always located near the ocean, and then the, as the spaceship's going up, it starts to arc over? Don't, don't you think that's a little weird? Uh, no, uh, 
if you look at the if you, well, if you look at the space program, um, you know how they originally got back to Earth was these little pods that would land in wait, the ocean. Wait, wait, you, you believe we went to the moon, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right, so, all right. All right, I know you said you have till two. I don't know how long you got, but um, there is. I can stay a little while. There is a, a popular YouTuber, uh, Scholar Fiction. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. No, I haven't. He would like to come on and ask you some questions, and I would totally bow and just play a moderator and let Skylar come on. Would you? Would you be well, okay uh, with that? Uh, 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 I'll say this: I, I'll stay for forty minutes and let him come on. So at twelve, I'll have to to dip right. out. Awesome. Um, but real quick, for, before we bring him on, well, what is his worldview? Just so I know. Um, he's a pantheist. Hey, what? He's a pantheist. What's that? mean? never heard that term. I, I'd rather let him describe it to you. I don't want to. I don't want to botch. All right, all right. All right. I don't want to. Okay, that, that's fine. But but just so we know, at twelve, I got to the drop because I got to do cool. something. But I can bring him on for a little bit. That's fine. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right. So, uh, Skylar, if you're still there, um, yeah, feel free to come in. Uh, there's the link. Um, I, once you get in, I'll uh, have to uh, adjust my screen here. So I'll go ahead and start doing. So just out of curiosity, what are some of the things you bring up when you bring Christians on here besides the ones you brought up? Is that like your only two go to or do you have anything else you bring up? Well, I talk about a lot of stuff, honestly. Um, I, I've delved my feet. I've, I've, I've delved my feet into young earth creationism. I've delved my feet in, a bit into evolution. I don't claim to be a scientist. Um, I, I, I rather enjoy the uh, uh, their scholar. I rather enjoy the. Uh, the talks here, I got to fix everything. I rather enjoy the morality talks, but I'm going to let uh, Skylar talk to you. I'm going to fix my screen while Skylar uh, introduces himself to you. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to play moderator while Skylar's here. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Right, well, hey, what's up, Skylar? Knock, don't, hey, knock. I don't, don't, I don't want you to feel like I'm taking over the conversation or something. Well, oh, no, like that, or... I, I've gotten all my questions in. Um, and I feel okay. at this point, if I continue, I'm just going to, I'm just going to focus on the things that I focus. I would love to hear a different perspective here. So um, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what's the, uh, what can I call you, my friend? The person speaking just, just refer to me as ETT. So, so before I before we get into a conversation, just give me some of the subjects you you would like to discuss, and, and we'll pick some out of it. Uh, I mean, I usually talk morality is my major thing. I talk to I talk about usually Old Testament uh, violence is something that we usually talk about on my show. Um, What's the difference between the Old Testament and New Testament? Well, I mean, one's about Jesus Christ, and it's the uh, and one is more about Yahweh. I mean, there's it's, I mean, it's a buttload of differences between the the old and new, new covenant. Okay. And now, covenant. Now he, now, the brother said uh, the raging atheist called you something that I wasn't familiar with the term. Could, could you, mm -hmm. you know what you refer to yourself as in your religion? Oh, you yeah. Yeah, I'm a pantheist. So uh, a pantheist uh, would believe in a God, like an eternal God, uh, but it manifests itself through reality, reality. So all physical reality is part of that God. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so you don't believe in the scriptures, though, correct? No, no, not at all. No. Okay, good. good. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think that you have, uh, well, depending on how you view it, it can be looked at as inconsistent, right? Uh, like, for instance, if if you're someone who believes that, well, I, I have a feeling you don't think God loves all people. Would I be correct no. on that? No, right? God does not love everybody. And does he choose who he's going to love before they're born? Uh, there is a predestination in the Bible. So I'll give you one example of that. Proverbs 16, 4, the Lord created all things for himself, even the wicked for the day of evil. So, yes, God did make some people just to live an unrighteous life and to be destroyed according to the Bible. Now, that seems like a problem of evil kind of problem, because why would an ultimately good God create uh, a but, creature that – hold on. I just want to finish the question real quick. Um, why would he create a creature that is opposed to his own very nature, being the good moral standard? He is the good – so it's, yeah. I'm sorry? Who's that creature you're referring to? Just out of curiosity. Oh, human, human, the ones we just referred to, human beings that were destined uh, to be. I, you, you said the elect. I don't know if elect, but uh, they're evil. Um, they're not good. Uh, he doesn't love them before they're even born. And I imagine the, what would be the reason he doesn't love them? Well, it, it could depend. Like, I'll give you an example. If you go to, uh, what is that, Romans chapter 9, verse 11. It says uh -huh. before Jacob and Esau were born, God already hated Esau before they were able to do anything good or bad. So the reason why God does what he does, I mean, it's not up for me to know the mind of God inside joke, but, you know, that's up for the most before they were able to do anything good or bad. So the reason why God does what he does, I mean, it's not up for me to know the mind of God inside joke, but, you know, that's up for the most high to uh, decide why he, you know, feels so, this yeah, way or that yeah, way. You just don't know. Well, the, the answer would just be, I don't know. Right. Well, I mean, I gave you an honest. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not, it's not a complaint. No, no, I'm not like saying like that's. I'm not knocking you for saying that. I appreciate the honesty. Right. Okay. But but simply said, it's I don't know the answer to that question. Right. Um. Uh, so uh, there uh, are that, just people God hates, and you don't know why He hates them. Well, the answer would be is because as I gave the example that God can have reasons for why He does and does not, you know, love somebody. Like I gave the example. Yeah, that's the crux of my question. Yeah, that's that's the question I'm asking is why does he hate certain the answer is I don't know. He just hates some uh, people we'll for some particular. Yeah, I mean, for, he hates people for some particular reason. 
but he's making them in a way that he hates them before they're even created. We'll say that the Bible says that some spirits were created for vengeance in the apocrypha. And as I said, going back to the book of Proverbs chapter. No, no, you, you, you don't have to repeat it. I understood it the first time you, you said the, the verse, but he's okay. just, he, but okay. he's creating now, now, name, something name, that goes against his own nature. It's his nature is God's good. Nature. He's God's nature is goodness. He's the moral foundation. Does, right? God, does, does God make evil? That's what I'm saying. He can't, it would be impossible for a perfectly moral God to make evil because evil is that that yeah. goes against his nature. But, but, and here's the misconception is the concept of God that you have is one that's not biblical. The Bible teaches that God is behind good and evil in the world. I'll give you an example. Well, no, no, no. no. I, I, I'm, I'm asking you. I'm not like, I'm just, trying to get I, your I, position I please, on it. Can I please finish my statement without being cut off, man? I, I, just, try to be, I, just, I, try yeah, to, I just think you're not really understanding my question and you're kind of going into oh, something that isn't. Oh, okay, reiterate your question. So, I mean, you're not disagreeing with me, right? My point isn't that he. What my point is is that are you familiar with the problem of evil? In the, you said the problem, the problem with evil. You said yes, the philosophical problem of evil. Uh, tell me it. Okay, so the argument is that a perfectly moral God, perfectly good God, right, being perfection, He is the standard of good. He is defined as the good, right? The good can't make something that's corrupt, something that would is not His nature, something that is not good, right? Because it would be a contradiction. Because a good, perfect God can't make something that is against what his very being is. And if you say he creates evil, well, evil is the opposite of God. It's the bad. It's the opposite of good, his standard. So that's the point I'm making. Go ahead, please. I'll try another yeah, yeah, that, That's kind of like a, a Christian viewpoint on it because our understanding of it is, yes, I'm not disagreeing that God is good. That's certainly so. And God does love. That's certainly true. But on the flip side, just as me and you have emotions, right? God has the same. God can love, but God can also hate. He can do good to a person, and he also can bring evil on the person. Let, let me give you an example of this. Uh, like that hurricane that just hit, hit uh, Fort Myers not too long ago. God did that according to the Bible. Amos chapter 3, verse 6. If there's evil in the city, was God not the one who did it? Isaiah 45, verse 7. I, the Lord, create light, create darkness, make peace, create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Uh, oh, what is that? Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Don't fear a man that can just destroy the body, not the soul, but rather fear him, the one that can destroy both the body and the soul in hell. And where's hell? We're in hell right now. Europe, but that's a different subject, right? Right mm -hmm. there. But um, but yeah, we, we'd have a different perspective on that. We believe God's behind all things, whether that be good, of course, or whether that be you know bad things that take place as well. God's mm -hmm. in control of all things. That would be my response. Yeah, it would still be a contradiction, uh, because once again, how, how okay, that, how because hey, because, I, because once again, God can't be perfectly good and moral and do evil. It's impossible. It's a contradiction in His nature. And all you're doing is just telling but, me He does who, evil. Who you're are not, you? You're not, oh, no, okay, I'm but, doing an internal critique of the actual Christian religion. Oh, okay, but but you said you don't believe in the Bible, right? How many times have you read it? Yeah, but you know what an internal critique is, though, right? You don't have to believe in the Bible to do an internal critique. Oh, okay, but but the problem with it is your concept that God is not the God that's in the Bible. That that's where we're having a misconception at. Well, it's you do you do believe that God is all loving, right? He's a he is God. perfect. He is the perfect moral standard. He is the standard. Now, of good, if you right? weren't now if you were paying attention, I said that it is true that God does love. I agree on that. Well, I that's what I'm confirming. Oh, just let me just let me finish. It's true, that God, it's true that God does love. That is true. However, God also has emotions like we do, so he can also hate. He doesn't just love, and that's all he is. That, that's a misconception. But hate is a bad thing. Hate is uh, – so, well, no, actually, let me before I even do that. God is the perfect moral standard, correct? The perfect moral standard. Well, all the, he all he of is our, the good. He uh, is okay, the absolute good. Yeah, yes, yes. Anything – like the way you would measure right or wrong, good or bad, is based on his standard. His being based on his commandments, yes, his standard. Oh, so you're a divine command theorist. You're not rooting in his. Wait, 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 brother, hold on a second. We're going too far here. You have to clarify what you mean by that. Never heard that term. Okay. So these are terms you probably should research and study before. No, no, there, there, there's black a Hebrew, Hebrew. No, no, hold on. No, no, you don't, you don't want me to interrupt you, but what I'm trying to explain. So oh, okay. The, the problem please, is I've, I've listed basic. Explain, explain it. I'm going to. I'm going to. But you have to stop. All right. These are all terms. They're basic terms when you're studying the Bible, right? Studying theology. And you don't have grasp on any of them, and you're jumping to a Hebrew religion. But let me, when we talk about divine command theory, what that is, is what you believe that what God says is moral. It's not rooted in his nature. That's a separate, it's two different kind of belief structures. So it's either his nature that makes things moral or immoral, him being the good standard, or it's what he says is just good. And then that means it's just subjective to God's mind. Okay, now, now the reason I, I asked you about that is because you agree with me in the Bible, God gave commandments, right? We, we both can agree on that, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, it's articulated. To, okay. Uh, all right. Well, well, we'll just say that for now, according to you. But but with that, right, the Bible says, uh, what is that? Romans chapter 4 and verse, um, was it Romans four fifteen? where there is no law, there is no transgression, right? So sin, according to the Bible, uh, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, sin is the transgression of God's law. So if God don't have a law against doing sin, it's not considered 
to be sin. So the way we know if we're doing something right or doing something wrong is we go back to God's commandments, the 613 commandments that he, you know, set up for us to live by. And even Christ, because what some people do is they'll say, oh, Christ said, you know, just love God and love your neighbor and, and that's it. You can do whatever you want. That's not so because Christ is told that you're supposed to follow the law that we read about in the Old Testament. And that, that's plenty of places in the New Testament. It says that. I think so, that's a little bit misreading of what Jesus said there. I think he was talking about if you follow these commandments, the rest will come naturally. If you love so, your fellow man as you love yourself and you love God with all your mind, heart, body, and soul, you won't have to sin. You won't do. You won't break the other commandments because if you just follow these two, the other commandments fall underneath it. So how does – rolling with that ideology, right? How, how does not eating pork fall into there? Like how, how can you – not love your neighbor because you're, 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 you're because obviously it would, it would be well there's different things to go into but i want to go back to the main point which Wait, was the I, idea of nature I, I, no no, no. I, I don't want to i want to go into the actual topic we were talking oh, about which okay, is god's but, but nature you, but you may now you you're interrupting me that. now you're interrupting brother, me. Brother, no, i didn't interrupt you when you were speaking yeah, let, let skylar finish and then ett you can get in whatever you want yeah yeah i mean that was just a short comment about jesus and you i believe you misunderstand it. that's not the point of the whole you're interrupting me again again you're interrupting me I guess, is, is that a moral value you have is not interrupting people? No, it's like, but, but this is how ridiculous it is. You're going to no, tell me. No, I don't want to hear narrative again. on the conversation. Brother, I want to talk about the topic. I'm saying, oh, no, okay, I would I'm like saying, to talk about the topic you, you and not have narrative finish. on the conversation. You, you can, you brother, you can finish. That's fine. But all I was simply saying is but you made a statement. you're not letting me finish. You may, uh, just give me 10 seconds and then my cheers. Okay, you made I'll a statement, said I'm wrong, and I was like, okay, fine. But do you know exactly how that's so? Like, can you demonstrate that? And then you were like, oh, well, let's move on. Like, come on, man. I don't believe I said, I said, I think you took a particular interpretation that wasn't completely correct. I don't think I just said you were blatantly wrong okay, okay but but I, I would like not. to get back to the topic now <laughs> okay, it seems like ahead. we want to focus on this and once again so you typically when you talk about stuff with like jesus and the laws and stuff christians will often say that the things that he commands are based on his nature right you're not arguing that you're just saying it's what he says is what is actually moral and that's the point of the argument so when you're a divine command theorist uh you're gonna have like it's it's basically it's just god's subjective opinion what he decides is right or wrong it's not rooted in his nature of being and that's the problem you're going to run to if you do, if you just believe in divine command theory. Go ahead. Okay. Now, I don't believe in, in the theory you said. Now, now, our ideology is whatever God commands us, that's what we got to go by. Why? Because he's the creator. So so we – That's divine command theory. theory. I mean, if that's what you want to call it, you that's can That's the term. It. You need to study oh, these oh, terms oh, if you okay, want to understand but, them. But, oh, okay. That doesn't mean I call it that. But if that's what you want to call it, then we'll run with that for the sake of conversation, right? Well, now that I've answered your we, question – well, Do we just now, like, now that we I, not believe okay, in like now, words? Now, like we're going to redefine words? Go ahead. Go ahead. Ask me a question. I'm not afraid. Well, yeah. And real quick, ETT. So – Generally, the world calls it uh, divine command theory. What do you call it? Well, I, I don't call it anything. I just call it following God's commandments, like you said. Well, well, so so if you don't know the terminology, it's semantics. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. You, you guys oh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's, so, I, yeah, but, I don't think he oh, follows oh, all the biblical law. I would have a feeling with this. Why clothing. is it that I don't get a chance to talk? Okay, no, go, go ahead. Ask your question. Go ahead and ask your question. Now, now you made a statement that said the entire world knows it as that, but yeah, I've been talking to people about this religious stuff for over eight years, and I've never heard anybody other than you call it that term. So how could the whole world call it? Well, I mean, I don't know who you're talking to. Well, I mean, I don't know who you're talking to. Yeah, not very philosophically minded people if they don't know terms. I mean, even Knock would admit, like, he's not, like, he's learning the Bible. He's studying it now. He's he's kind of on his process to have these conversations. And I was there years ago. Like, it took me to get there. But, like, he knew it right away when I said it. Yeah, okay, yeah, maybe not the whole world. Not everybody in yeah. the whole world. Don't, you know, I, I, I exaggerated my yeah. speech, but like it's what it's what it's called. It's colloquial speech. Yeah. We're just using the words. Uh, uh, all right, all right. So literal. Yeah. Uh, OK, well, well, we'll run with that for the sake of conversation. Now, Skylar, I want to um, go back to something you said a minute ago, and we mm -hmm. just got to talk about it a minute. But I wanted to hear your understanding of this, because I was going to what Christ said about keeping the law. You said at, it's not along the lines. I'm near paraphrasing you saying that was the truth. So I was like, OK, cool. But can you demonstrate how I have a misconception about it? Because I could be wrong, yeah. but I'm asking you, can you demonstrate exactly? Yeah, how let's that? let's go to the scripture real quick. Uh, What's in question? What scripture? Well, it's it's Matthew 22, I believe, 37. But I want to make sure that I have it up because I like to read these things as we're doing it. So we get it right. Matthew 22. OK. Uh, do, 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 37. Okay. The greatest commandment, verse 34, hearing that Jesus had silenced this, uh, I can't ever pronounce these words. So this the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with the question, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? So he's being asked a question here. Jesus replied, love the Lord with your God, with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws of the prophet hang on these two commandments, because obviously if you're following, if you love God, you're going to follow his commandments, right? And if you treat other people the way God commanded you to treat other people, right, you're also following his commandments and you're going to have a good life. You're going to follow all these commandments. It's just very, very simple. 
Now, what part do you kind of disagree with me on? Okay. Now, now let's let's go back up here. I have it in front of me. Now, the question that was asked to Christ, it was not about, you know, what laws do we have to keep now or what ones we don't. The question was rather, you know, what's the greatest commandment? In yeah, the I just read it. Was, uh, I, I, brother, hold on. Don't, don't cut me off. Let me finish. It's going to wrap around to what you we were saying. Now, now, with that, right, now we understand the initial question. Now, when Christ responded, he said, yeah, the greatest commandment, love the Lord, thy God, with all the heart and mind. The seconds like it, you know, love your neighbor uh, as well. But then he said on verse 40, he said, these are the two, excuse me, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So he's saying on these two, start off with these ones and then follow the rest. He's not saying these are the only two you have to follow. That That's a misconception. He's saying start I off with I didn't make these. that argument. Uh, but but you went here to, to basically say just follow these ones and then. No, I didn't. You just assumed. Okay, no, okay, so what were you trying to explain? Exactly what I just said when I read the scripture and explained it. Okay, so so what what does this mean? Do you only have to follow these two, or or how many are there? I, I just I mean I just said it. I just said that he's I, saying I, that if you follow my commandments, right? Not I mean obviously he's not just he's not referring to the commandment. He's saying now he's referring to the other commandments within the scripture. That if you follow those commandments, my commandments, and by loving me, you'll you'll follow those commandments. And then he's talking about how you treat other people, which is how he's talking about the Sermon of the Mount and the other stuff in the New Testament about treating other people with kindness, like not executing gay people and stuff like that. Wait, so God's not with that? Then? I'm sorry? So so it's not a sin to be You know gay. I'm not a Christian. Well, no, I'm, I'm saying that you're not supposed to treat them uh, cruelly. So what's going to happen to sinners when Christ returns? I'm not a Christian. Okay, so, so why are you having a conversation about the Bible if you say you don't even believe it? Sure, because I like to uh, educate oh, people. Oh, oh, okay, that, that, that's fine. Now to answer the question then. So since you're that's studying I just said, Bible, I like to educate. I like oh, to educate oh, people. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll respect that. But with that being said, that means you must then know what's going to happen when Christ returns. Have you studied that or not? Oh, of, of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, he says so what's going to happen to, to sinners when Christ returns? Well, so they're going to have to go through Revelation if they're alive, the book of Revelation, the things that are happening. Is there I mean, a punishment for their sin? There's all different interpretations, man. The thing about the Bible is, like, you know, I'm not – when I talk to people about the Bible, I don't go with my um, – typically when I make arguments on a show or we have discussions, I have biblical scholars come on and we have discussions about it. My goal isn't to interpret the Bible and tell Christians what the Bible means. I take what they mean. I understand. I ask questions about what they believe the scripture means. And right. we go back and sometimes we'll read the Hebrew, the Greek, or the Aramaic. I have a co-host, Dr. Josh Bowen, who could read all those languages, who studied it, right? Now, the reason I do Bible, I do this stuff is because uh, people like you who get into these dark forms of religion when I have no problem with typical Christians, but you're, you know, like I said, you've already said there's no problem with executing LGBT people. I mean, besides but, but legally. You, you do agree that's in the Bible though, right? Oh yeah. It tells you to kill gay people in the Old Testament. Sure. It tells okay, you also, so do you work on the Sabbath? Do I, do I work? Well, yeah. I'm unemployed at this particular moment in time. So no. Yeah. But have you worked on, do you, will you go back when you go back to work? Are you going to work on the Sabbath? Uh, to the best of my ability, no. No, but you'll do it if you do, but if you have to, you'll do it. If you have to get paid, yeah, you'll do it. Right yeah, now, this is this is where this, this is where the hypocrisy. Can, yeah. I, can I can I even comment, or are you just going to talk a little bit? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm right, sure you right. don't. Mix, I'm now, sure you wear clothing that have mixed, mixed oh, okay. fabric and stuff. Oh, okay. Now, now, am I am I going to get a chance to respond? You will, but I'm just I just want to point out all your hypocrisy. Okay, okay. I can look in your picture oh, and see what you're oh, wearing and oh, tell that you're not following okay. the Old Testament, the laws. Oh, of oh, okay. Well, if you could be respectable and allow me to respond. Well, you can. I mean, you're just such, such a rush to respond that you don't want to hear what the other person is talking about. No, it's that I hear you, but what you're saying is pure bullshit. Not not to be. I'm so, so I'm sorry. So you do not wear mixed fabrics. <laughs> Okay, okay. Hold, 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 like, just to, just yes, no. Well, actually, to, to correct you, what I have on in the picture, it's all 100% made of the same thing except for myself. But you don't wear mixed fabrics is what you're telling me. Everything in the picture is of the same fabric. I didn't ask about your picture. I noticed the deception. I, I'm, you're sure trying before, to avoid it. I'm sure before I have worn uh, mixed fabrics. You st but you don't today. Uh, as far as I try, I try not to wear that today as the command. You try not to, but you break the okay, command. Okay, you got a question. Can, go ahead, can I please respond? Point out the okay. now, now, this is, now, this is where grace comes in because you cannot perfectly keep God's law today. You cannot perfectly do it. That's where grace comes in. That means if you mess up, you can be forgiven. Let me give you an example. Yeah, but kill the, the gays if they, don't, if they uh, mess uh, up. What, what, you were just complaining about how I talked over you, but then you want to do it to me. I'm just, yeah, you can go, you can go to whatever you want, but I'm just saying, okay. that, you know, but kill the gays. They're, they don't have grace. I wasn't, I wasn't finished with my statement. We, we can get to that if you just allow me to finish. All right, just see now, just, I was just saying, now, if I work at, say, Burger King or, or um, you know, damn Walmart, the Bible commands I'm supposed to have a um, fringes on my garment, right? I'm supposed to have fringes on what I wear. I can't do that if I work at those establishments, right? So that's one law in the Bible that you cannot perfectly keep in the time that we're in. That's why grace <laughs> comes in. That means we can be forgiven. Sounds like a cop out. You could you could follow every commandment if you want. You just choose not to. That, that's not so. You, you don't even know all the commandments. Not by heart, but I can go and read them. 
How many like you, you believe and if you want, you just choose not to. That, that's not so. You, you don't even know all the commandments. Not by heart, but I can go and read them. How many like, do you, do you believe we should execute disobedient children like the Leviticus tells you? I, I or mean, are people is, who cheat on their spouses, should we execute them also? Uh, according to the Bible, yes. But of course, you know, that that right now, if you do that, you could be punished by the state. So yeah, of course. Right? But you're the kind of person that would want the, gov you want the government to enact these laws? Well, the, the governments, they, they don't rule off of the, the Bible. They, uh, that wasn't the question I asked you, and I think you I'm know sorry. that. To, to, an, to answer your question, they should be enacting the. Oh, that, that's the question. That's it. So you do want the government to enact Levitical law, like executing people who cheat on their spouses. Th that's God's commandment for it to be that way. Yeah, but you want that. You want to follow is God's it, commandment. Is it, it, is it that I want that, or is that that the Bible says? Well, you, you should want what God wants, right? Yes. Okay. So um, I imagine, and you think it's a good thing that we would execute people who cheat on their spouses. Uh, well, of course, according to the Bible, it's a sin worthy of death. Have you ever cheated on somebody? Have I ever done it? Yeah. Well, what does it mean to cheat on somebody, by the way? Because well, you just, you just said they should is, deserve death. I think you have a definition well, in your well, head. Okay, now the only way a man can cheat on a woman is well, actually, a man can't cheat on a woman. That that's not. That's not <laughs> You, you, you laugh, but do you? You don't you're, know. You're such a right? fucking hypocrite. Yeah, well, a man can't you, commit infidelity. How is that? I mean, if, no, no, if, if you sleep with a woman that's not your wife, is that not committing infidelity? No, now, now you have to let me finish for me to respond to what you're saying. Because in the Bible, right, a man can have more than one woman. So if, let's say for an example, if a man has one wife, but then his wife comes home and finds him in bed with another woman, that's not considered cheating in the Bible because a man can have more than one wife in the Bible. So moral of men. Woman. So moral of men. Such hypocrisy. So, so you, you, don't, you don't know what the Bible speaks about? Oh, no, I do. I'm, the reason I ask questions is because I want you to say it, right? I don't want to put the words in your mouth, and I want you to answer it. I know the Bible probably better than you do. But I, I, I purposely, you know I purposely, <laughs> no, no, don't try to get away from the topic now, right? Get, now get what you're trying to do is try to get away from the topic. Every time I try to talk, you talk over me. I know, I mean, but you, on, you, don't, you try to talk you, when you I'm talking, that's what it is. You, you, you support, that. like literally, I mean, it's just so immoral, right? The fact, okay. it's so hypocritical of you oh, to say oh, that okay. women get, can be put to death for cheating, but men can't. Like that's, it's just such a hypocrite. Now, 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 hypocrite. Okay, now, 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 Skylar, this shows you have not been paying attention to what I'm saying. Because every time I try to chime in and say something, you're talking over me. You're now, if you would please give me a minute talking about to drama perform the, the sentence. Now, if a man was to sleep with another man's wife, he would be put to death for doing that in the law. That's true. But a man can have more than one wife in the Bible. That's what I said. Have you ever cheated on somebody? Have I ever done it? No, I yeah. have. Are you married? Am I married? No. No. How old are you? I'm actually 20 years old. 20 years old. Oh, that makes a lot of sense now. Okay. You're young, man. Your views will change, hopefully. You'll start studying it more. Okay. Now, 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 okay, now, Skyler. But let's let's keep this fair. I'm trying to be friendly. Oh, but every no, time, I'm just telling you okay. my opinion. Oh, oh, okay. Now, now you said you know the Bible more than me. Now, let's say that maybe that's so. But let's see. How many commandments are in the Bible? <laughs> it's not 10, by the way. No, I know you have a particular interpret. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to answer questions based on your particular oh, interpretation. Oh, so, so now, so now you're, so now you're Bible, saying, you interpret. You like interpret. Like 700 no, 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 no. Now you're not going to answer questions. Yeah. Well, no, okay. why don't you ask, if you want to talk, you want to talk about morality, like moral realism versus anti-realism? No, let's, because uh, I find it funny, but most atheist streams I go on, that's the main topic they like to talk about, like whether it's Wild Hearts Channel, um, you know. Uh, all right, a few all right. let's pick a topic, pick like a topic, man. Up. Let's talk less about the drama pick, with atheists. Okay, and okay let, let's pick a topic. Pick, what pick something what you want to ask me questions you? about, and I'll answer okay, them. Okay, cool, okay, cool. Um, let's say, what about Satan and hell in the Bible? What, what's your view on that? I'm not going to just give you. I mean, we're talking to talk to me. If you have questions for someone who is a non-believer in Christianity, now, now, now if, you, if, if you're you asking me for my interpretation of Scripture, I'm not going to give it to you because it's pointless. But you just, so you just said, but you just asked me. You just said I could ask you a question, though, right? Yeah, but I'm not. Uh, you want me? So you want you as a Christian? You want me to tell you my interpretations of the Bible, or do you want me to tell you my ideas on them, what I think about them? I mean, I can give you my opinions. Sure, it's not going to be very interesting. Oh, I think okay, God's no, a dick no, for allowing no. Satan to sit there and mess with human beings. I think it's it's something once again that goes against. Wait, the wait, moral wait, nature. wait a second. You just made a statement that's incorrect. Where did God sit there and let Satan mess with people? Oh, we call it. Well, we have Genesis. We have Job. Yeah, you yourself did, brought up Job did, earlier. Did God do? Did God give him the permission to do that, or did he do it himself? God gave him permission. That's the point. Wait, okay, and so earlier not... you were talking how Satan is under the authority of God. Yeah. Yes, but but he, he was just saying that God would sit there and let Satan do that. It's like, no, God gave him. Real quick, to the side chat, I, I see the excellent question. Jason just had some good questions that he has for you, um, but I'm going to let this continue. And then before you go, ETT, I want to ask you Jason's questions. How many he has? Yeah, It's, it's, it's just when, a couple. I, it's just a couple. When you say it like God allowed, that's the same thing. Like God allowed. When I said God allowed Satan to do this, that's what I was referring to Job, which he did. He gave allowed. He gave permission. Okay. So so, so what, are you, what, are, what are you bringing this up to? Is there a disagreement? You asked me a question. I told you that. 
You okay, told so, me. So not, I'm sorry, man, but you, it's like you don't keep up. It's like you ask me a question. No, and, it, it, and then it's like, what, why the problem, you this the problem is that this is so laughable. It's hard to even pay attention to this because it's like, now you're you don't believe it. You don't believe in the Bible, but you're on here trying to have a conversation with the Bible. You're the one who asked the question about the Bible. So why would you ask me a question? This is exactly what I was talking about. I you literally, okay, uh, you ask me a question been, about the Bible, then you say, why are you on here complaining about the Bible? Oh, okay, let, let, let's let's do this. Have you been listening to the entire conversation? Just a yes or no one? No. No, I don't think okay, how that. how long have you been listening for? Half an hour. In and out. Okay. Now, episodes. is there anything that me and Raging Atheist talked about for this entire stream that you have a question that we can speak about? Yeah, I mean that's what I was trying to do before. Like, like on I was trying to give you the opportunity to ask me questions because you felt like I was piling on. Well, you know, well, but oh, I can okay, go back well, to asking you questions. It's fine. Uh, go ahead and ask three questions. Yeah. Okay. So let's do three questions. Uh, do you, well, now I already know you support the Levitical Cause I, law. Because I'm being generous. I, I said I was going to hop off at 12, but I can do a couple more minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, listen. Uh, do you think uh, slavery is moral, objectively uh, moral? Yes. You do? According okay. to the Bible, yeah. According to the Bible. Now, now, now in response to that, do you know there's going to be slavery in the kingdom of heaven? I know that's what you believe. Uh, okay, can I give you a precept on why I believe that? No, I'm not interested. So so, so you're going to sit there and say that I'm wrong, but then when I say that I have proof I didn't why say I you believe were that, wrong. you don't want to hear I'm not interested. Proof. Okay, then. So, so do you have no right You have a listening question. comprehension problem. I think every time I say something, you don't really hear what I'm saying. Hey, hey Raging Afi, is, is, is that really fair? He asked me my view on that, and then I responded and say, hey, I can show you why I have that view. Then he's like, oh, I, I don't want to hear it. It's like, well, why the hell you asked the question? I don't think I, I, I think that my original question was different. Yeah, what I, really I, asked I, don't you. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't see how it would matter. Like, the question was, like, about slavery. Yeah, I asked about slavery. Yeah, I asked him if it was moral. That was my question. Yeah. Now, if you want to explain why it's moral... To own people as property, you can explain why it's moral. Yes, yeah, so that you would think be an explanation. Yeah, do yes. you think it's moral because there's going to be slavery in heaven? Do I think it's moral because there's going to be slavery? Exactly. So, I, or, or, not or, connecting it. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Do, you, do you just think that slavery is moral? Is slavery moral? Well, it, it depends on the um, on the circumstances that it's taking place in the Bible. So it's not objectively moral. It's based on the situation. It's based on God's commandment. Well, like I said, once again, but that wasn't the question I asked, right? You said yeah, now, you're, you're, you're talking now, about you're talking oh, about relative, okay. moral relativism. Okay, now, now here, here's the thing: you're asking me as a man if I think it's moral or immoral, right? You're asking me as a no, man according to God's know. standard, because you follow okay, God's now, morals. Now, now, oh, okay, so you see the hypocrisy in that. So when I try to respond with the Bible, then you don't want to hear it. No, no, no I didn't like, want to hear about your thing in heaven because it wasn't related. It wasn't what the question I asked you was. I asked you about morality, and then you just said, "Well, there'll be slavery in heaven." Did you know that as a question? And that wasn't an answer to my question. All right, let, let me let me pull up a precept that that goes into this subject matter. Maybe you I could. Mean, is there any way you could demonstrate that objective morals exist? Give me a second. I mean, it tells a lot.